Wisconsin, huh? Yep. Them your boys over there or what? Probably. I was a spot we were gonna maybe go check out in the next couple of days, but he's there and he's hunting, so hopefully he gets one, I guess. Looks good back in there. But me and Tad are headed out, it's 4.30. We're gonna go kind of glass the spot that I glassed on, I think the second night we were here and saw a couple deer, so we're gonna try to come in from the other side and get on a high point and try to see some deer. Jake and Nick are both here and they're gonna go together somewhere and Ted and I are gonna walk in a little bit and try to get eyes on a good one. Looks like we got about a mile walk and it's 90. Yeah, it's hot. Out. So we'll work up a sweat so our muscles will be nice and loose by the time we get there. Oh, yeah. Spotted some deer way across there walking along the edge of the canola. Trying to get eyes on them here. I got a guess at what they are. What do you think? Probably two does. Doe in the front. Two does. One, two. Does. It's pretty much what we've been seeing the whole time, so that's what we figured. But hey, they're up moving. It's like 98 degrees out, so. Me and Cole are about to slide down in here on this uh, big patch of cattails down here. This is where Cole saw a buck a few nights ago when he was out glassing, so. Get in there and see what happens. There's been some deer activity here. Just trying to figure out where they're coming from. Another one that comes up from the bottom right up the gut here. You might be able to see quite a ways down there if we get up on top of there. I think we're gonna have to go up another one.
nice buck, Dad. Go. We just had another nice buck pop out of the cattails down here. He's a little bit further to the south than that first one was. He's just down there browsing on stuff at the moment. But it looks like he's going to work his way towards these hills, so me and Cole might be able to make a move here soon. back into here and just kind of own it. Back it in like you grew up on the farm. I got, I've been hunting here my whole life. <laughs> Stay tuned. We tagged out on upland birds on the way here. A bunch of prairie chickens or something flushed up right in front of my truck and I killed at least two of them. You still see a feather floating off my antenna right there. Somehow it didn't crack Nick's already broken windshield. Yeah, cause I've got, I got at least four if not five cracks in my windshield. I might have to put some long johns on before I walk up here on top of this knob. No way, Texas. Dude, you feel that breeze? I think we ought to get up there. Get up there before all these big monster bucks go get in their bed. Not just miners on our own. Just gonna pop back up on this knob that we sat. Last night we can see over this big bottom. We saw like eight or nine bucks, probably 30 plus domes. Just cracking daylight here, fog's lifting. Hopefully we can get eyes on one of them bucks we saw last night, get a beat on him or he's going to bed down. And then either make a move right away here or slip in there this afternoon. Is he alive out there? Yeah, I see six right now. <laughs> hey, bucks? Uh, I, I literally just put my eye in here. This is the first thing I see is these six deer. 
All out in that green field. You got a runner. What are you running to? Sauce? No. Oh, there, ooh, 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 ooh. You got one? Ooh, there's a bug. <laughs> what would you talk about, dude? Ooh, 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 ooh. He's a nice one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Way out there. Okay. I can see another, I think a nice buck out there too, past the hay bales. Kind of doing the same thing he did last night in <laughs> reverse. It's like he's doing the same thing. Oh yeah, that's a nice deer. Give him the up. Oh, here he comes. He's coming right to us now. Is he? Yep. Yeah. Mm. Toot. Mm. Toot. This uh, hard antler buck moves kind of interesting. He just like, you know how we thought he was kind of postured up yesterday just because mm -hmm. he's taking one step at a time. He's kind of just like meanders. Yeah, he's doing the same thing right now. That east wind though is going to be funky this afternoon. I don't know what to think about that. He just disappeared behind some of this closer stuff. He was just about to get to that fence. He's still walking towards us when I last saw him, but I can't see him now. I don't know if we'll be able to again. And there he goes. In there to bed down into the thick of it. I see him going to the left now down there. That's good. I could just see his rack flash through there. He's in some tall stuff now. Yeah, I think we can get right in there somewhere. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> got one bedded down. Operation Eagle's Nest up here. So we got in here and we pretty much immediately spotted one of the bucks that we saw last night. And it's one of the ones we would like to kill. And mm -hmm. we watched him walk all the way across that field and go back into the public and walk right down in this little cattail marsh. We got a pretty good beat on where he went in. So depending on the wind, that's the biggest factor this evening. So our plan is just slip back down in there and get on the edge with him that he walked into. Just try to get in bow range of that and just set up and wait, see if he comes out in the same spot or a different deer comes out in that spot. So what do you say we go cruise? Make some more coffee. Yeah. Holy poles. How many are there? Like five hens and you gotta be at least 15 poles. Mm -hmm. huh. Cole and I are out scouting right now. We had a pretty slow morning. We didn't see anything except for one doe this morning in the same spot where we saw those bucks in the last video. So now we're out driving around checking some different chunks of public. We're just trying to come up with some different options if this spot where we saw those bucks last night doesn't pan out. They don't look like cow tracks, so they're elk tracks. Elk tracks? <laughs> I don't think an elk would be out here. Yeah. I'd say a moose over an elk guys. <laughs> could be, could be either one, I guess. Hopefully it's a giant deer. I worth checking out. Thumbs up. <laughs> Four fingers. That ain't bad. No. Coming right out of the public there. And I think we might try to track this cat. See if we can't find his bed. Feeling good about it. We've had it for a couple hundred yards now. I'd imagine I can take him with my fist. Wearing that, you can do just about anything. We're gonna. Looking at that grasshopper. Yeah, you got it. Get that tent. Look at that. Ran over your literally, foot? Yeah, literally, while well, he's chasing the grasshopper all through here, ran over my foot, caught it right here, and then started eating it right in front of Ted and I. <laughs> it's a bold ground squirrel right there. Yeah, a ferocious predator. Those 13 line ground squirrels are <laughs> yeah. killers. Taking care of the cricket problem around here. Needs to be taking care of the flies. Yeah, spent half of my afternoon just swatting the flies. All right, it's September 3rd and we are heading back in after this buck that we saw last night. We actually saw two bucks in here last night. Either one of those, if they come by tonight, they're gonna get shot. We're gonna go in there, get set up a little bit different than we were last night. He crossed through a drainage to the north of us, 
and we got a southeast wind tonight so we're going to set up just on the north side of that drainage that he went through we should be able to see the whole bottom still from right there i'm going to get in there try and get in a decent setup to kill him if he comes up that drainage and then depending on where he comes out or if we even see him we'll make a move from there but it's going to be pretty dang calm tonight so it's going to be tough to be able to move around on him but I'm just going to get in there close to where he went through at see what happens we got myself cole and his killing outfit and Greg let's go get him the camera right now so it's a killing team let's it's go see team. if we can yeah it's the see team for can sure about to jump in where we hunted where we have been hunting this whole time so we got a pretty good idea where that buck is at and a pretty good actually a really good wind to hunt it but it's kind of funky for our access it's a north northwest wind and we got to come from the north northwest so we're hoping we can loop around enough and give him enough buffer where our winds not gonna make too much of a difference but he's in some real thick stuff so I don't know and it's blowing pretty good I'm hoping it just goes right by him mm -hmm. it's not a problem if we can get in there without blowing a bunch of deer out, I feel like we'll have a pretty good chance to at least see him. Yeah. So. I think we're going to kill him. I think we're going to at least see him. Mm -hmm. He's going to see us now. So it's like 7 o'clock. I think the first evening we saw him at 7.30. Yeah. It was like 6.15 or 6.30 when we were coming in and that doe was already out. Doe on a phone. We think he went into this gap right here. And we might already book our toll thing. Who knows? But I think we got it clean. So everything, if he comes out here, everything's inside of 30 yards. We've been kind of playing it safe. This is probably the opposite of safe, I'd say. This is we're very aggressive. Yeah. I mean, if, if this is the trail that he went in on, I think we got a real good chance of killing him. There's another gap right on the other side of this, and I, I think he might have went in also, but I think we're better off just covering this one, because if we move up, then he's straight down one of us if he comes out right here. Yeah. If he comes out up there, he might just drift this way, or we can get on him again tomorrow, I'd assume. Yeah. We're, getting, we're finally getting aggressive in Rammy, though. Yeah.
also didn't predict him to come out through that gap. They think, well, I thought he was going to come down the further. Yeah, but like 60, 70 yards down. Not that real thick woody stuff like that right there. Which we could not hunt it over there, even if we knew the wind was going to pull down there. I think like you said, we could have maybe sat in that. But we were worried about them coming out early and the sun being right on us. Yeah. He'd been looking right at us. We're right here. I mean, if he comes out right here, we were in a great setup to kill him real close. So, just a matter of choosing life and picking the right trail. He chose life and got out. You think you feel pretty confident it was him then, probably? I mean, we hadn't been seeing any other deer like those does coming out in the same spot. Yeah. Every night. There's a lone deer coming out lone too. Lone deer. At the moving at slow. At 7.30. And he was. And we could hear him coming and it was... Almost sound like maybe he was rubbing back there, feeding on something. Yeah. I could hear branches moving around. For several minutes we could hear it. I mean, we hadn't been seeing many other deer go in where he goes in. Yeah. You know? And it sounded like a big deer. That first bound. Yeah. When he first got our wind, it sounded out here, hopefully Ted and Cole are about to kill one or just killed one. Yeah, I hope the screen's about to slide to them. We just had a buck pop out here real close to where we saw the big one yesterday. Might have been the same patch of cattails where this one just popped out. I didn't see it. Cole saw it for a split second. He came out and walked right back in. He said, that's a good sign of one's in right in there. It's a nice buck. day four Cole and I back in here where we were last night with Greg where we saw that buck down in this bottom we're actually coming in from a completely different side but we're on the same side that he was bedded in last night so we're gonna hike up here this morning see if we can see down in these cattails and try and get eyes on this buck thunderstorm rolling in just to the north of us looking at the radar looks like it's gonna miss us just to the north I think we'll be able to get up here though where we can see down in this bottom pretty good we should be alright to get up there and spot this thing we're in a thunderstorm now we thought it was gonna go around us this morning but got out here and it slowly started drifting this way didn't see the buck now we can't really glass that well so it's a wash okay could be worse that would be a lot worse. You get struck by lightning. You know what they say when you get rained on? Good. Sun's <laughs> getting higher. Head note to slip in on this buck. It's better to do it in the rain. You don't leave any ground scent. Got about a mile to walk back to the car. It was perfectly sunny. And then it wasn't. Good. 
After getting caught in the rainstorm, Cole and myself built a fire back at camp and got all of our gear dried out and ready to go for the afternoon. We spent middle part of the day working on videos and game planning for the afternoon on how to get back in on that buck. All three of us headed back in that night and with the windy conditions we were able to slip in close to where that buck had been hanging out. We sat there for several hours but the buck was a no-show. Stand up, stand up, stand up. Over there, he's right there. 